On point tonight, Washington elites celebrated this weekend with news Finland and Sweden want to join NATO. Remember what that means. An attack on one is an attack on all. If Russia attacks Finland like it did Ukraine and like they have threatened to do, we go to war and American soldiers die to protect Finland. There's never been a more successful military alliance than NATO. Finland brings a lot to the alliance. Um, frankly, their participation strengthens the alliance significantly. Forgive me, but we haven't been hearing from the past few months. We've been hearing all along how strong NATO is. In fact, NATO keeps expanding. Back in the Cold War, we needed NATO. The Soviets threatened us directly. America protected the free world. But since the late 1980s, uh, there is no Soviet Union. Speaking of maps like the one you see here, before we get all excited about Finland joining us, let's look at where we are committing American troops. You're going to see, though, that that map is not labeled. So which one is Finland? Which one is Sweden? Which one is worth shedding American blood to protect. Now, here's the map filled in. Finland is next to Russia since World War II. They got to play both sides. They weren't part of NATO or the Soviet bloc. But now that Putin got frisky and invaded Ukraine, Finland suddenly, suddenly wants U.S. protection. A Russia state TV commentator explained it this way. Their official reason is fear, but they'll have more fear in NATO, referring to Finland. When NATO bases appear in Sweden and Finland, Russia will have no choice but to neutralize the imbalance and new threat by deploying tactical nuclear weapons. The deployment of nuclear weapons is what we've been trying to avoid all along. This isn't really a partisan issue in Washington for some reason. Republicans and Democrats in Congress agree that Finland joining is awesome. And perhaps the fact that Republicans and Democrats agree should maybe give us a little pause, especially considering some of those in Congress. Remember, for the past three months, the administration has gone to pains to not provoke Putin, to not talk about a proxy war. We've done dozens of segments about that philosophy. And largely, the Biden administration has been pretty successful in Ukraine with that. The Ukrainians are beating Russia, and so far, the Russians are not attacking the United States. Now the number three Democrat in Congress has dropped all pretense when arguing for any new policy. As I told you, in, uh, Code Point is now sending 80 percent, reversing Asia uh, supply to European supply because they need it because we're at war. We are at war. Stop questioning everything because we are at war. And if you question an American pledge to protect Finland, well, then you must be pro-Putin. That's on point tonight. Paul Post is the non-resident fellow for foreign policy, public opinion at the Chicago Council, teaches political science at the University of Chicago. Good to see you, sir. I appreciate it. Uh, all right, Professor, should we just have an open door for NATO? Anybody who wants to join, come on in, and the United States will protect you? You know, it seems like that to a lot of people, especially when they're looking at what is what would be a record-breaking process in terms of the speed by which Finland and Sweden would turn from being neutral to joining NATO. But of course, the door isn't completely open because that was the exact process that Ukraine was trying to go through for a number of years and could never enter. And so the big question is, what's changed for Finland and Sweden? And would that possibly point to something that could change in the future for Ukraine to eventually join NATO? Yeah, That's I, something I'm, I'm wondering about. I, I'm thinking about this, though. Uh, we've seen the effectiveness of the Ukrainian military, undoubtedly. We've also seen that Russia wants to control Ukraine. But Finland, GDP 255 billion, only 23,000 active troops, about 2% uh, of their GDP spent on the military, uh, which fits NATO's uh, thoughts and requirements. Sweden, though, only 1.3%. Uh, I, I go back to this. Why, as the United States, should we not question whether or not we want to protect people who are this close to Russia and provoke Putin in this way? It's a very good question. In fact, it's a concern that I share. Going back to my comment about how fast this process is unfolding, it's not that I'm against these countries joining, but it does raise big questions about how exactly are you going to defend them, given, as the numbers you just pointed out, they're not yet in a position to fully defend themselves. And that's an obligation that we have to think hard about. 
Well, if they're, if they're not fully in a position to defend themselves, that's why they want to join NATO, right? So we'll defend them. They see what's happening to Ukraine and go, oh, gee. And for a long time, Finland sort of played both sides of the coin here, right? They, they sort of enjoyed being in the middle between the West and the Soviets and, and reap the benefits. That's absolutely the case, that Sweden in particular, both countries had this policy of neutrality during the Cold War. And of course, Sweden very famously had a policy of neutrality during World War II, where that actually upset Churchill to where he said that Sweden was profiting off of both sides. And Sweden's been able to maintain that throughout the Cold War. But the biggest thing that I think has changed is obviously this invasion of Ukraine. And in particular, I think what has, if you will, scared, I think the use of the word fear is accurate here, is that Russia now seems very unpredictable. People yeah. did not expect them to go fully into Ukraine in the way that they have. There were expectations of possibly something less. But I think that is what is now worrying these countries. Well, well for sure, uh, obviously. And it obviously is also worrying them that the NATO cavalry did not ar arrive for Ukraine. Ukraine has had to fight itself. Um, this is Lieutenant General Ben Hodges on CNBC talking about both Sweden and Finland. Take a listen. Two nations, each with very uh, strong, resilient societies, and two nations that both bring uh, real military capabilities. So they will be security providers, not consumers. Okay, so if they're security provi providers, why do they need security from us? And I, I keep going back to this. What is the argument for giving it to them? So there's a couple things to unpack here. First of all, I do actually, in some respects, disagree with the comment that they would be strictly security providers. I do think that they would need assistance. One of the big questions is, would we be willing to station troops on Finnish soil in order to deter Russia? That's been a big thing that NATO has been doing over the past several years in the Baltic states, something called the enhanced forward presence. So would that and, have and, to be I, I, I want to stop you real quick, just if we put up the map again in terms of what we're dealing with, moving troops into the Baltics, which are the former Soviet satellite states, that's what really has enraged and provoked Vladimir Putin, correct? That is something that is pointed to by Russia as one of the things that they're concerned about. And if you actually go to the statements that Putin made today in this regard, he pointed out that Finland and Sweden joining, that's not really a big deal. He then used the phrase, the alliance infrastructure. That's what they're concerned about. And it's in reference to this. Would NATO be willing to station troops as a deterrent on Finnish soil? That's something that could potentially raise the threat level for them. But at the same time, you might have to do that to deter Russia. So it's a fine balance to try to reach. All right. What is the what is the risk to the United States? And you said you weren't sure whether this was worth it or not. Um, are we to believe that NATO isn't worth anything if Vladimir Putin isn't scared of it? If you don't forward deploy troops, it doesn't show any kind of resolve that you're willing to protect uh, the land that you don't have troops on. How is it possible that we put troops into Finland uh, to to be a NATO partner and then not provoke Vladimir Putin? So your confusion points exactly to one of the key issues and problems. Okay, which is so that real, real quick. So, so if there's, so I, I'm right to be confused, um, which makes, yes. makes me feel a little bit better. Uh, but why are, why is there this unwillingness in Washington to ask any of these questions? Why is there this knee jerk on both sides, Democrat and Republican, to go, hey, this is fantastic. We can't wait. I'm actually in agreement on that. I think that there's a need for hard questions to but be asked. But why don't you think there's being asked? I think part of this is that there's right now, there's just a lot of momentum. There's this okay. sense of we're all banning against Russia. You've seen this with the sanctions regime. You've seen where all these countries kind of piled in. And so a lot of times that leads to this momentum and there's a desire to keep it going, keep it moving. And the unfortunate concern is that there aren't these questions being asked. To give you an example, when the Baltic states join, there were these kind of questions out there, but they weren't being thought through. And it actually was almost a decade later before they finally said, how exactly would we defend the Baltic states if they were attacked? That was a decade after wow. they had finally been brought you in. Make, boy, you make a great point, Professor. Um, one of the reasons you teach at such a great university ab uh, about this. Um, the only pe person I can ever think of who did stop the momentum was George H.W. Bush in, uh, in Desert Storm. He said, we're not going to topple Saddam, and he didn't, uh, despite a lot of pressure otherwise. Professor, thank you. It was good to see you. Thank you so much. All right.
Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.